So we uh, continue so that with uh, Kohei uh, Hayashi, who has a very uh, interesting uh, title, a derivation of the Carter of the KPZ uh, equation from the Bernard Bernstein's uh, model. So Kohei, like the floor is yours, and you have 25. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I tried to rush. Uh, thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, my name is Kohei Hayashi. I'm a, a currently a postdoc researcher at Liken Items, uh, which is a national institution of, uh, in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to uh, thank all the organizers for giving me such a great opportunity to be here. And also, um, actually, I'm uh, visiting here as a uh, uh, I've been here. I, I instituted to a superior technical as a rigid researcher, so that's why I'm wearing this t shirt. So <laughs> I'd also uh, thank uh, the institution for uh, and also Patricia uh, for inviting me, inviting me here. So today I I'm going to talk about uh, the, uh, some universality of so called Carter Parity John equation or uh, KPZ equation in short. Uh, from uh, by showing uh, the equation is uh, can be derived from various types of microscopic systems and today I will focus on the so-called uh, Bernard and Stoltz model as a, a microscopic model. Uh, so uh, KPD equation is a kind of PDE and B, uh, Bernard and Stoltz model is a kind of particle system so I hope this uh, my talk is following the aim of this uh, conference and I hope uh, many of you will get interested in this topic. Okay so let us begin. Uh, so to, uh, here is our today's uh, outline. So first of all, I'd uh, like to introduce the KPT equation and some uh, say some words about its universality. And uh, uh, I will, I'd like to introduce some uh, very specific model from which the equation can be derived. And also, I'd like to uh, it, uh, say something about the realistic works. And then in the second part, I'd like to. Uh, Talk about the main result. Uh, I define the Bernard and Stoltz model and state the main result. And uh, hopefully, I, I will uh, be able to give, uh, say something about proof of drawing for uh, experts. So let us begin from the introduction. So KPC equation is the following uh, stochastic pressure differential equation, uh, the, where the unknown function h uh, satisfies this form with. Uh, of equation. So where uh, nu and capital D is a positive uh, constant and gamma is a, a real uh, constant. And uh, double dot denotes uh, space and white noise. And we uh, we only consider a one-dimensional uh, setting for a spatial value. And this is a kind of, uh, actually this is a kind of a singular uh, partial differential equation and it has been a, a very uh, uh, difficult to uh, make, uh, show the well poisonous of this stochastic uh, differential equation, uh, but nowadays it could be uh, it it was uh, uh, fixed now, and we can uh, give give a sense to uh, this uh, partial differential equation. And as a similar object, we can consider the tilt of the uh, h uh, satisfying the KPT equation uh, by formally uh, taking the derivative of this equation, and we can derive uh, at least formally the uh, following stochastic Vargas equation as a similar object. And uh, what is notable for this uh, equation is its universality. And uh, it has been, uh, 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 so the equation has been derived from various uh, types of microscopic systems uh, through uh, scaling limits procedure. Uh, so uh, it's often the case that when we say the KPZ universality, uh, it often means uh, uh, distribution of universality or some uh, scaling uh, property uh, as t on x tends to uh, infinity. Uh, but here, I believe that the equation itself has a universality. So I like here, I'd like I'm aiming to uh, derive the equation uh, uh, without uh, relying on a specific choice of model and uh, in a very, uh, in a robust way. Uh, yeah. Okay, and then, uh, okay, in th then uh, as a, a warming up example, I'd like to uh, introduce some microscopic model from which the equation is derived. So this is called uh, a weakly asymmetric and uh, sim simple exclusion process, which is a kind of particle system. So we consider the state space uh, zero as, uh, as a uh, zero one product, and we denote the element by eta like this. Maybe everyone uh, knows about knows very about this. And uh, uh, let n be a scaling parameter which tends to uh, zero, uh, which tends to infinity. And then uh, the dynamics can be described as follows. So each particle jumps. Uh, to right or, uh, or left with rate p or uh, q respectively, and we introduce this uh, weak asymmetry for this parameter p and q. I mean, the difference between p and q uh, is given by one of a square root of n uh, factor. And then this model, of course, have a conserved quantity, uh, which is a total number of particles like this, and we are interested in, in the fluctuation of this guy. And as a, uh, uh, in order to uh, 
uh, be concerned with the stationary situation, uh, we fix uh, the invariant measure, which is given by the product Bernoulli measure with uh, uh, homogeneous weight rho, and we begin initialize the dynamics from this invariant product invariant measure. Then, uh, ah, sorry. Uh, then we are interested in the density fluctuation field, which we defined by the low, uh, average of deviation uh, accelerated by uh, diffusive tank scaling. And we consider one of the square root of n factor uh, the, uh, because we are considering a CLT scaling. And uh, we take the uh, one of our, uh, we multiply one of n to the spatial variable uh, by making the, uh, you know, the width of the space continuous. And here, uh, Fn is um, uh, some constant, which is referred to as a uh, moving, moving frame, uh, because we are, uh, there is a flow from left to right direction uh, with velocity one of, uh, n to the 3 over 2. So we have to subtract the, uh, the uh, effective velocity to see non-trivial uh, limit as n tends to infinity. And the result by uh, bertini Jacomin uh, shows that this fluctuation field uh, converges in distribution uh, to the solution of stochastic Bergers equation of this form. Uh, form. And then uh, this is a celebrated, celebrated result by Bertin and Jacomi, and the then result uh, is uh, extended by uh, Patricia and Milton Hara uh, to various types of uh, jump uh, wave step. And also, they uh, uh, constructed some robust way to uh, derive the equation from microscopic systems. And uh, well, this is a derivation of Parker's equation, but also uh, when we consider the height function, then it's also possible to derive the KPD equation as a micros uh, macroscopic object. And here, I'd like to mention that weight set can be decomposed into some, uh, some kind of uh, uh, like this. So mainly, we can extract a symmetric part uh, which macroscopically corresponds to the heat diffusion, plus some perturbation uh, which comes from the asymmetry of the uh, jump rate. And this order is given by one of the square root of n, then uh, we could derive the Vargas equation. So this decomposition has been very uh, important to derive the uh, KP0 or SBE from microscopic systems. So here I'd like to mention uh, some related to works. So since the Bertin and Jacobin's uh, result, uh, there are a bunch of uh, papers uh, which derive the equation from uh, various types of microscopic systems. For example, uh, this paper considers zero-range process, which is a kind of interacting particle system, or uh, this paper considering the ginzburg landa model, which is a, a system of stochastic differential equation, or also uh, this paper considering so-called sasamoto shippo model, which is also a kind of uh, diffusion processes. And uh, the, there is a paper uh, which studies uh, the Bernard Schultz model, as, we, as I described uh, later. And also, uh, the uh, multi -body, uh, vector valued KPT equation is uh, also derived from various types of uh, systems. And th all this result is uh, in so called weakly asymmetric regime. I mean, there are parameters p and q, uh, whose discrepancy is, has order one of a screw to n. But uh, it turns out that uh, there is another uh, regime uh, from which the KPT equation is also uh, derived, which is called a strongly asymmetric regime. This means, for example, a particle system, uh, in this paper, uh, this is my I, uh, this is me, and uh, I proved that from totally asymmetric zero range process, where the particle jumps only to one direction, uh, we could only uh, we, we, we could also derive the equation from uh, by, by scaling limits. And also, uh, uh, this uh, regime is first uh, at the beginning uh, studied by Milton Hara and Gregorio Moreno Flores by uh, O'Connor Yoru Polymer model. And I wrote uh, three papers uh, for this regime. And today I will, I'd like to talk about this model. Uh, yeah, from, uh, from this on. Okay. So from now on, I'd like to introduce the main model, which is Bernard and Stolz model, and I'd like to state the main result. OK, so let me define the Bernard and Stolz model. So if this is a Markov process on the st state space, uh, this one. And again, we denote the element by eta, like this. And then uh, we consider the Markov process generated by the following two uh, operators. One is S, which corresponds to the symmetric part. And this uh, means just uh, flipping the state of two uh, neighboring sides, eta j and eta j plus one. On the other hand, a, uh, operator A defines some Hamiltonian uh, dynamics, uh, which is governed by nonlinear potential uh, V of uh, B sub Bs. Uh, this is a kind of nonlinear uh, potential. And in what followed, we consider the Markov process, which is generated by S and A, and we tune the uh, parameter uh, S and A n as a, uh, yeah, to accelerate in the uh, dynamics. 
And uh, of course, uh, we need to uh, construct a Markov process properly. And this is not always true for every potential, of course. So we need some condition for the nonlinearity, of course. But uh, we don't want to, uh, yeah, I don't want to uh, dig in that uh, tree. Did you? So basically, we assume the existence of Markov process generated by these operators. Okay, so this is a definition of the model. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Who are SN and A? Uh, okay, I will describe this one. So basically, uh, SN is uh, uh, should be a, a diffusive, I mean, n, to the, uh, n squared to see macroscopically. And we, we should tune the uh, intensity of AN uh, de depending on the uh, potential. And di di this uh, drastically differs from the choice of potential. Yeah. Okay. So this, and also, uh, there is an invariant measure of this form, and we initialize the dynamics uh, from this. Uh, a product measure as we did for the uh, basic case. And here, lambda is a, a, a parameter which describes the exp uh, expectation of this guy. Okay. And then, uh, what is notable for this model is uh, the model has two uh, conserved quantities. Uh, one is uh, volume, uh, which is uh, given by sum of eta j, and the other one is referred to uh, as uh, energy, uh, which is uh, is given as a sum of this potential element. Okay, and so uh, what what we are interested in is this uh, fluctuation of these uh, two concept quantities. Uh, one is volume fluctuation, and the other one is uh, energy fluctuation. So I like to uh, know uh, what is the limiting behavior of this guy when n tends to infinity. And of course, uh, I like to uh, give some related works about uh, BS model. And of course, the limiting behavior of volume fluctuation and energy fluctuation depends on the choice of uh, potential v, uh, v of Bs. And uh, let us begin from the purely harmonic case, uh, which is given by uh, this quadratic function. And then uh, there are three papers about this result. And they show that the uh, first uh, volume fluctuation given, is given by some trivial, some kind of trivial thing. I mean, some uh, limit is given by uh, the classical Orenstein rhythmic process, uh, which is a normal diffusion. Uh, but for energy fluctuation, uh, they prove that the uh, in the limit, some anomalous behavior can be derived as n tends to infinity. So, I mean, volume and energy behaves in a different time scale. So, this is uh, important. And then uh, the, there is a result for this choice of potential, which is called the total lattice potential, uh, like this. And then this uh, paper shows that they consider some linear combination of volume fluctuation and energy fluctuation, and they show that the limit is given by the solution of stochastic Perkins equation. Okay, and this is a very recent result, and I want wanted I wanted to do is to extend this result to various types of potential, and here we consider. Uh, this is our uh, today's result, and uh, we consider a very general uh, nonlinear uh, potential V of B S. And I, we want to, uh, the aim is to derive the KPT equation from this uh, very general, general model without imposing very specific choice of potential. And the idea is take the uh, high temperature regime, we call it, uh, by taking this sandwiched uh, scale. <laughs> and if we choose a parameter beta as one of the square root of n, then we could derive that uh, we can find this some uh, nice linear combination of volume and energy fluctuation. And we could derive the stochastic Burgess equation from this new concept quantities. So I will describe the main result about uh, this paper. Okay, uh, so the, uh, first I'd like to uh, give you some idea of a high temperature regime. So uh, let me uh, consider this uh, choice of potential, which is defined uh, by sandwiching uh, the variable by uh, the, some parameter beta. Uh, which is basically different to inverse temperature. And uh, we let beta tends to zero as uh, scaling parameter goes to infinity. And then what happens? Uh, we can, uh, by uh, simple Taylor expansion, uh, we can extract the harmonic part, I mean the purely harmonic uh, function as a main part, and which macroscopically corresponds to the heat diffusion, uh, plus some perturbation, which is given by the cubic part, uh, uh, function. Okay? And then uh, we can ch uh, choose a beta equal to one over square root of n, which is a proper order uh, to make this perturbation has also order one over square root of n. Then it turns out that this cubic uh, potential gives rise to the nonlinear term of the stochastic Burgers equation, and thus we could derive uh, the stochastic Burgers equation as a limiting object. Okay? So this is a basic idea. And uh, let me precisely uh, state our result. So what we are interested in uh, is the following fluctuation field. So this is a combination of the volume element and the energy element 
like the, you know, by, like this, and we uh, take the velocity uh, of all the uh, n square actually. So a n is here n squared, so very uh, strong asymmetric regime as well. And then the assumption for uh, potential is like this. So consider a smooth convex function uh, whose uh, derivative has at most uh, ex exponential growth. Okay, so this is a basic assumption, and then the main result is the following. So when we take beta equal to one over square root of n, assuming uh, some uh, normalizing condition and some, it is a kind of weird condition, a uh, technical condition, uh, but then uh, the main result is uh, the limiting object of this fluctuation field is given by the stationary energy solution of the stochastic variable equation. So hence, I could, uh, we could derive from value, uh, starting from very uh, generic uh, form of nonlinear function, then we could show that the limiting object is given by uh, the stochastic variable equation, showing that this equation is in some sense uh, uh, universal. <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, the main, our main result, and uh, our fluctuation, this one, uh, can be understood as a, a fluctuation of the derivative of the potentials. Yeah, and maybe I can skip this slide. And, okay, this is a, a result for KB's equation. And on the other hand, uh, we have to, uh, I'd like to note, uh, focus uh, on the energy fluctuation, uh, because for, uh, I said that when the potential is given by the purely harmonic case, then the energy fluctuation uh, uh, go to the, uh, some anomalous behavior as the energy to infinity. So, and the, uh, since we, uh, we are taking this form of perturbation, perturbation so when we uh, let beta very rapidly vanishing, uh, then uh, it is expected that uh, this uh, anomalous behavior is covered uh, also for this model. Okay, so uh, indeed, uh, okay, uh, it depends on the uh, form of potential, and if we uh, uh, define k star like this, and then we can cover the result of the uh, uh, purely harmonic case as follows. Uh, so uh, let me consider uh, diffuse time scaling for the symmetric part, and the anti-symmetric part can be uh, accelerated by this, and then we uh, assume that the inverse temperature beta uh, extremely uh, rapidly uh, go to zero, then uh, we can show that the energy fluctuation is given by, uh, is given by uh, the anomalous uh, diffusion equation, like uh, which is driven by this derivative operator. Okay, and this, yeah, and maybe I'm looking for a time. Okay, and this is the second result. Okay, and for, uh, uh, the maybe I'm, I already, uh, still have 10 minutes, so I'd like to uh, say something about the proof and kind of generalization uh, of this approach. Okay, so let me uh, explain why we uh, should uh, properly choose a linear combination of volume and energy uh, based on the uh, computation for currents. Okay, uh, so let's uh, uh, double V and double E denotes the instantaneous currents of uh, volume and energy respectively, and uh, uh, by this, this as the usual way. And then uh, we can compute uh, uh, by definition of uh, uh, like this. Then, uh, but here uh, we have a linear uh, field of xi. So here xi is a uh, derivative of the, of the energy element. And this linear term should be uh, seen for in a hyperbolic scaling or uh, Euler scaling. So I mean, if this is uh, here, then uh, basically we cannot uh, see anything uh, below, uh, I mean, uh, above the uh, hyperbolic scaling. So we need to uh, somehow ex uh, subtract this uh, uh, linear part. So this is why uh, we consider some linear combination of volume and energy. And uh, if we consider uh, the cup, uh, coupling of volume and energy with some con constant u, then we can uh, have linear part like this. And we can choose u and uh, in, a, in such a way that uh, this red part uh, can be uh, proportional to the original uh, uh, fluctuation field. So this is the condition for this, and actually there are two choices uh, to realize this uh, this thing. And one uh, from one choice, we could obtain the uh, fluctuation field uh, from which a KPT equation uh, can be derived. And then the mounting of decomposition for the first uh, case one can be uh, like this. So we have uh, something a quadrat uh, xi squared from uh, from here. Uh, so hence uh, we can use uh, the, uh, some previous result to derive uh, the Vargas uh, equation by uh, some comp compactness argument. Okay. And so finally, I'd like to focus on <laughs> let's say something about generalization. So uh, okay. Uh, 
uh, let me, uh, maybe you, you can forget everything about, uh, everything that I mentioned uh, up to now. And from now on, let me consider uh, some microscopic systems with two conserved quantities. So one is eta one and the other one is eta two. Uh, for example, for this case, it corresponds to volume and energy respectively. And then uh, we, uh, we fix the mean of these uh, two conserved quantities by low one and low two, and let double one, double two be corresponding currents. Okay? And then we, it is expected that uh, each current can be decomposed in such a way that uh, uh, we have a constant of, we have a constant of course, and the next term uh, we have uh, some uh, linear part, and the other one is given by some nonlinear term, and we can uh, decompose for, uh, for the higher order terms uh, by using some uh, Taylor expansion argument or a Boltzmann Gibbs principle argument in microscopic uh, terminology. Okay, where uh, J is a current and H denotes a Hessian. So uh, this uh, linear term was problematic because this gives uh, uh, non trivial things uh, only when uh, we see the microscopic system in Euler scaling or hyperbolic scaling. So we need, we want to extract this guy. So that's why we, uh, okay, <laughs> this is what I said in the previous slide. So we want to extract, di extract this guy uh, by properly choosing the linear combination of uh, concept quantity. So this is established when we uh, consider some linear combination of original uh, concept quantities like this, so where R is a uh, orthogonal matrix uh, which diagonalizes a matrix uh, Jacobian, uh, then we can see that uh, uh, this this can be, uh, you know, uh, maybe here is <laughs> some mistake. Okay, okay, we can see that uh, this this is proportional to the new modes, uh, xi1 or xi2, and then uh, we can extract the uh, quadratic part as a main part. And here G is a, a mode coupling matrix. So when uh, this is a current for more, uh, type one or type uh, type k, so if this is uh, something like psi k squared, then we can extract the nonlinear part of the KPC equation or stochastic package equation. Uh, so this approach uh, enables us to extract the, uh, the nonlinear term uh, when uh, g k or k k not equal to zero. And I think this uh, approach should work a uh, very robust way, and this would be applicable for various types of microscopic systems. So uh, here is a summary of this talk. Uh, okay, maybe I should uh, finish here. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Kohei, uh, for, for, for this talk. Uh, you were exactly on time. And, uh, yes, questions. So this condition about fourth relation between fourth derivative and third derivative. Yeah, yeah. Is it really crucial or it's somehow artifact? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's technical. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because for example, you expect that if, if this doesn't hold, you still get KPZ. Okay. Okay, uh, if the condition, uh, uh, okay, here. <laughs> if this condition is, isn't the case, then there is some drift term, uh, which is something proportional to a uh, derivative of u, uh, which is a, a linear part. And uh, uh, if, yeah, this is a, actually, uh, okay, this minus this is a co coefficient of this guy, and we didn't know how to characterize macroscopically for the drift term. So this is very technical. So if, if this is not the case, then there is additional term. But I believe this uh, we can ex uh, characterize this term as well. But currently, uh, we need some additional techniques, so we impose this one uh, to you know, uh, enable, uh, no, neglect this uh, possibility. Yeah. Yes. Uh, this is Kohei. Uh, so, uh, what is the relation physically represent? Okay. Uh, here is a linear combination. Here, uh, this is a li our linear combination. Yeah. And by Taylor expansion, uh, this means uh, uh, this can be uh, obtained as a main part of the uh, potential, derivative of potential. So physically, it means uh, uh, maybe some, so it means derivative of energy. I don't know uh, physically it, uh, it means, but yeah, mathematically it's, uh, it's equivalent to look, look at fluctuation of this guy. Yeah. I mean, it's a natural object to look at because, I mean, you can't look at the joints lower uh, volume is potential, it's mm -hmm. too complicated, so why is it natural to look at this in your combination? Uh, yes, I, it's a very, maybe very uh, important question, but uh, currently I uh, just uh, found this combination as a mathematical <laughs> computation, so yeah, mm -hmm. I'd like to know much about it in a physical <laughs> meaning. Thank you for your question. <laughs> okay, so I guess, uh, yeah, we can give uh, Kohei another round of uh, applause.